Hi guys, this video is a bit long, 20 odd minutes, I apologise. Well worth a watch though guys. In the video we cover exhaust, carburetor, rollers, liquid cooled, other little bits and bobs. But it's worth the watch. Diagnosing like the starter motor for instance, what you think it could be and what it ends up being. So guys, like and subscribe. There's the end bit of this racing up and down as well. It's a long video, get a cup of tea. But it's well worth the watch guys. Really informative stuff. Thanks a lot guys. Hi guys, well this is part two from yesterday's video or whenever you watched it. Front end, okay? Four bolts, the other side, take it off. Ross. Come on mate. Electrical tape, cover your old feeds up. This must have been bounced around like a good one. There's two actual bolts that should go in here. They're snap, put some washers on them guys. Don't let this wibbly wobbly all around. It's all loose, it needs fitting properly. So electrical tape, sort out the covers properly and then make sure that is fitted properly and doesn't rattle around like a bitch. Water. <clears throat> this doesn't just take water guys. In here is water. What's wrong with that? Antifreeze. This weather, water in there, in the weather we had in my last couple of videos, minus three, this will freeze, which will then in turn not run properly and cause damage. Okay, so slightly worried now if it's got plain water in it and it's had it for a few weeks and obviously there is just crystal clean water in there, no antifreeze. So that will cause problems and could have blown the head, literally expand. Remember how ice works. So that's not good to find. Um, I'm going to drain all that out and put the equivalent antifreeze in. But first I've got to see is it losing water and I've got to see if it runs properly. So that's a bit of a bugger. Anyway, that's part of the little bit here we're going to talk about. Next part we're going to talk about. Two parts here we're going to talk about. Carburetor. This is the link pipe I was speaking about. That's not there. But it's still got the good old carburetor on it. Well, that should be a little bit tight on there. You might be sucking in air. And then in here, the other side of here, is the starter motor, so it's under here. But I'm going to check out all the clutch, belt, bendix, and then the starter motor, carburetor, pipes. Now, it doesn't particularly matter if these pipes are long, I might cut them short, but it does matter if they're tight, okay? I've had it before where people have, let me show you, sorry guys, where are we now? Mm. Here we go, pipes. This is the vacuum. If these are slightly too big, they'll suck in air as well. But they do feel nice and not so tight on. So literally, if you get the wrong gauge pipe, you're sucking in air, that will cause problems as well. But we're gonna go through that in a minute. And of course the exhaust. As I've said to you guys, this should not be as noisy as it is. He's painted this up well, I guess. I was doing black, not silver, um, because they get quite dirty. Anyway, it's heat proof paint. These two will come off here, that comes off there, and it will wiggle out. And I'm assuming, as we see in the video, how crap it's going to be. Um, as I said, this is water cooled. So you always know water cooled because here is the water pump and not a fan. So um, these are generally much, much faster. We'll have to have a look at that. And obviously, we're going to go for. Oh, the plug. You mean the one I forgot? <laughs> I took it while trying to kick it over. Yeah, I may have forgot that. Anyway, remember, give these a good clean up, guys. Um, not too rough, you know, just a nice brass or uh, metal brush. Not even great big heavy duty ones, you're just going to wreck it. So, give it a nice good clean, blow them out, and then we're going to pop this back in, and then we're going to see whether she kickstarts or not, and see what I've got to play with. Um, I do think that obviously the carb's not set right, so we might have a little play of that while we're doing this as well. Anyway, let's pop this back in now, it's clean. So guys, an important update. On the vacuum, the bottom one is the air. I must admit, sitting at home sometimes and I get a uh, quick uh, message on YouTube saying, Mark, which is which, how to do it. And I say, top one, bottom one, I never remember. Remember, some of these videos are done ages ago. Anyway, it is the bottom one. Clean it, pop it in your mouth, get a little pot. You know, going straight here. That's petrol. Put the petrol one in a small tub. Get hold of one, put it in your mouth and suck. Watch. Fuel, stop. Fuel, stop. That's how to check your vacuum is working. If you get a small amount of dribble from it, 
don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Your little bit here will stop that. They fit okay. And that one obviously goes back on there. Now, I've mentioned before, this needs to be one and a half turns out standard. So it's got it straight, which I know is not standard, but anyway. So you pop it in there, and you go one half turn, two half turn, and three half turn, and there's a little bit there as well. It's another quarter turn. Not the end of the world, so it was just over one and a half turns out. But it never linked pipe on, and can any of you see a major problem with this? Someone has drilled all the holes. Now I showed you the plug, and it's black, which means it's too rich. Someone's put holes in it, and not got a link pipe on here either, and it's sucking in there, and it's still rich, so there's a problem with this carburetor. It's not the standard setting on this one, so we'll adjust that setting on there as well. Now, I'm going to get it going in a minute, and you'll be able to hear it. Um, hopefully kicking it and then I'm going to adjust this as we go along like another video where I showed you where you can do it running or not and then full throttle it's going to be too early in the morning and too loud to do this so I may play with this a little bit I'm not going to show you that bit I'm just going to play with it um, and I'll show you what I did to it afterwards and get it right but I'm going to do the actual exhaust that's what I'm going to do next after I finish playing here remember this has got to come off as well let's get on with it. now you will need a friendly persuader Remember guys to leave the nuts two on top, put them back on there, and tap them down. This is not what I expected. I looked at this exhaust originally, it does look really new. Um, the wadding actually is quite good until you get to the top end. That is rock solid, absolutely rock solid. Now, when I first got this bike and the guy opened the lid, I found this inside. <laughs> Please, please, please don't use that in your bikes. Um, he said he drained it all out and put some good stuff in, so that's good to hear. But it causes damage. This wadding is hell and all thick. And then you get inside here and you see what the problem is. Okay, can you see that? That is not good at all. And that is using cheap oil and that is not running properly. So this is rock hard and it's not using it as a baffle anymore so take all this crap off basically you're just running it like that you might as well just stick that back in the way it is I'm going to clean all this up cut that off put some better wadding in there and then refit it and hopefully it won't be as noisy as it was it really was noisy guys um, you revved it up and just made lots of sound and go nowhere and that's because no back pressure anyway let's get on with this I'm always trying to give you guys handy tips of how to fix your bike for less. This one, did you notice that it was actually really quite good when I rolled it until the middle? So what I did, rather than using new wadding, I turned it over, cut this tiny bit of really hard end off, and then re-wrapped it the other way around so it's fresh inside. Now I'm going to start it for you. Just start. Taking out the carburetor another half turn, uh, I'm going to sort all them holes out. There's only one person that will know how bad this bike was before. Ross, please comment, mate. I know you're watching. Um, that's a lot better. I don't know how it comes over the microphone. It was really cracky before. A lot, lot better. I did take the seat out and checked whether it's fitted properly, which it is. So, uh, so far, so good. Um, not losing water. I've had it running for a little while. Now I can because it's not so loud. <sighs> Still cold, though. Anyway, we're going to get on with this now. I just wanted to prove that that was what it was, the exhaust wadding. And it really does help with back pressure. So don't, don't underestimate a noise exhaust, how much it will damage your bike. Anyway, water out. Let's look at this bloody starter mower. So here we are, guys. I say about these, they are a couple of quid, I know. A voltmeter, a godsend. Here we have an earth to the battery. And now I'm putting this live wire, live wire, the tester, to the live of the starter motor. Okay, and then I can see the voltage, clicking it, nothing, just a dull 0 0.1 volt, nothing, it's just a bit of a feedback, there you go, nothing. So that shows me, and it would have gone to voltage obviously, there's voltage. So it shows me there's something wrong with the power going to the starter motor, so it's going to have to be off, check the wires, barely powering off, and I'm going to check the wires and see what's happened and what's happened there, alright? What have I got so far guys? Well, I've got power coming from the starter to here. This is permanent live, by the way. That then plugs into this wire here. Red and white. Goes from red to red and white. 
this lead goes all the way down to here. Now, I've often said about this, guys, about my long bar getting in there. Okay, nice long bar. But I've got no power to the starter motor. So the lead, this one here, that's wrong with it. This is a cut, burnout, something. But I'm going to take it all off and have a look. I know I've got power coming from there, so it's the boost bit. Let's get on with it. So guys, with a voltmeter, which I hope you can see, and earth, and putting power, you should see. <laughs> and there we go. It wasn't a power problem, it was an earth problem. So, we've got it working. There we go, let's move on. Okay, something's not quite right. Um, and I can see maybe what happened to Ross now. The live wire is getting power through, but it's intermittent. So I cleaned the terminals up, plugged that back in. There was no earth whatsoever. I tried it several times, no earth. And I pushed around the battery area, and I'm going to show you there was power, but it's not starting. And up it span. So all the panels will come off. There is an earth problem with this bike. So I'm going to check where the earth terminal goes to the frame, and then trace the green wire that goes there. Because remember, your starter motor has a live feed to it all the time. It's when you pull the brake in, it's a micro switch, that then allows an earth. And that's how your starter motor works. A lot of things on cars and bikes actually run by earths and not by the power. You think sending power through it, so it's an earth cutoff. Anyway, it's good to see. I've now got to take all the panels off and finish off this starter motor. We will carry on. Exhaust, starter motor, carburetor and tuning next. Oh, and the water. Hi guys, so yellow one for the um, relay and we have working we turn the power off we change the relay over for the one that poor Ross paid an awful lot of money for we hold it together clicking noises put it down again turn it off change this rather expensive one for a regular five pound one, turn it on. So, don't always think going to main dealer and getting something that doesn't work properly. That's crap, isn't it? So, that's what was wrong with this, guys. It wasn't anything to do with a star motor, an earth, or anything else, or wires. It was this bloody horrible thing. So, five pounds, an awful lot more money. Stick to what you know, guys. Let's start on mower, let's get that back on, it's all done, now let's find out why it's not going very fast, and the water to top up. Right guys, variator, clutch, clutch tool. Someone once said to me, you can hold the back brake and do it, but hey, I've got the right gear. Now, remember what I said, ram the claw hammer in there, use your foot as well guys, big bar, and uh, there it goes. Okay, I know we had this off recently, so it probably was reasonably easy. Um, but we're going to check the rollers out and see what's happened here. He says it only does 40 miles an hour, doesn't seem to gear up. Well, that needs rubbing down. Okay, can you see that? That needs a nice bit of cleaning, some wear going on there. Belt is tight, clutch seems okay. Let's see what's going on here then. Right, well that's really, really quite stiff to get off. Um... Well, that's not my drop test I normally speak about, is it? What's happening here? Okay, look. Well, that's, that's okay. Right, rollers. Too light. Now, he's only put these in. Can you see that, guys? Already wear lines. Can you see them? These are not rolling. Can you see that in the camera, guys? Bit of light on it, maybe. They're not rolling. They're sticking. Yeah, you know, flat spots, all of them. What's causing that? Well, this. Uh, clean finger. Dirty. All right, they're not rolling in there properly. This is all need cleaning as well. It's dirty. Actual fact, there's oil on there. So, this all needs cleaning. Let's get this off and have a look at this as well. And uh, should we do that while you're here, actually? Well, you're always here, I guess, aren't you? 
Give or take what I'm babbling about sometimes, but there you go. Right, this is a bit of a bugger this can be. Uh, hold in there. Uh, I might need to WD-40 this one. Well, let's get some leverage on it. Oh, there we go. You can't do this. Well, as I said, someone said to me you can do it with the rear brake. Possibly. But anyway, there we go. There's that nut. Don't mix them two up. It doesn't really matter, but I don't mix them up. Belt looks good. Right. Where? Look. Rusty, this clutch is not picking up properly. Can you see that, guys? It's not picking up. Pads are good. And look. That all needs cleaning. Right, we'll get this one. And look at this again. This this oil stuff on it. So we'll give us a clean. Now, someone asked me recently... Let me get you up to my head height. Someone asked me recently, can I put oil in with these? No. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say to you. Stop. No. Dry. They roll dry. I said to him, don't do it. He said, why? And I, I'll tell you what, if you want to do it, you do it. But I suggest strongly you make sure these are dry. I'm not happy with them. I'm going to change them. He gave me some 10 grams. I might put three tens and maybe a couple of fours. These look knackered, and he said these aren't new. I can feel them. They're not. They're really, really rough. They feel like sandpaper. So Sank's not going right there. So let's get on with this. Take some time doing these roll in this variator, mate. Look. Do you know? I know he cleaned them out. I know he said he did, but I just found on the back side here, really, really ground in. So I had to wire brush inside there. I mean, that is, I've not seen that like that. I reckon the old rollers must have really perished in here. And of course, if you don't clean that really, really well, you know, and I know he's done this recently. Now, let me give an example. Um, clean glove. These are the rollers he gave me. Listen. Okay, you can't really hear that, I know. Now, the rollers he had in there. You can't. I'm trying to say, these feel like emery cloth. Do you know? They're rough. They're never going to roll. I can feel it. It's really rough. Rollers should be smooth and shiny. Um, if they're not, they're not going to work. They're not going to come out. And this is what you get when you open up. She goes, and you think, come on. It should be that little like turbo boost, as it were. And that little turbo boost is normally where this gets bigger and makes the rollers come out and you get that second gear, comes back. They need rubbing down, that needs cleaning, that needs rubbing. I can't stress enough guys, clean that, ped will go a lot better. Right, let's get on. After this job, just the water, and we're gonna see what this does. Right guys, all back together, water to do, air filter. Can you see holes? Without the link pipe, and with extra holes, should be running neat, not rich. I'm gonna take this off, put tape inside that and cover them over. Then I'm gonna adjust the carburetor properly. Um, he did say it conked out after a little while, so I may have to take it apart, but I'm gonna give it a go now. Put some tape over that, electric start works, all the belts are clean and all dry and rolling like they should. I put five and 10, that's at 45, Normally go for 30, 40s, so a little bit heavier than normal. So the pull away may be compromised. This is water cool, so a good bit of pull on these as well. So let's get this air filter covered in. Let's pull it back on, drain some water out, and then give it a start. Let's get on with it. I was a tad concerned just sticking some tape over it. So with my handy glue gun, I glued the inside. Much better, I think. I'll take the tape off, put the tape on the side. I mean, the tape would have got a bit greasy, oily, and could have sucked in and then caused more problems. So, glue gunning it, much better idea. And it's um, tidier, I think. Let's get on with it. So, guys, what have I found? Start motor turned out to be this wrong relay. Not changing gears turned out to be really rough rollers, really rough, and just not cleaned 100%. No antifreeze. Carburetor adjusted to what should have been properly, but it had holes in the air filter as well. And the exhaust wadding wasn't right. Now, oh, because I chucked the water out, <clears throat> it went over the head. And I could see 
tiny little bubbles. The head wasn't down properly either. I mean, I got a whole half turn out of all the head bolts. Now, I know torque settings and all, but that's still a little tiny bit of escaping gas. So, that's your electric start. I haven't tried this yet. Now, let's see if she gears up. picked up it goes and you get a little tiny bit more and that's where it's opened up perfectly and now there's not even with this one now the gap where you get the, the bolt out of it you know get some jerk that is smooth running really well electric starting oh, okay I've got it two half turns it smells a little bit rich um, it needs a good ride now, so I've got to put it all back together again. Loads of missing bolts at the front. Um, <sighs> cable ties, super glue. I'm gonna clean that all up. Um, guys, take it off. There's a hole there. Just put that back on with a small bolt and put a nut at the back of it. Don't glue them, it looks horrible. And horrible, I'm gonna clean all that up. Um, I'm going to put some bolts and screws back in there. If you haven't got them, pop to your local store and get some. Don't cable tie them. Uh, I'm going to get all the bolts fixed next on this. Put it all back together again. And then I think it's a rideys. Uh, if I don't like it, then I'm going to strip the carburetor down. It's the only thing I haven't checked properly yet. Anyway, so far so good. This will be tomorrow now. So uh, let's get on with it. You won't notice me going inside having tea, having a shower and so on. You won't notice all like that. But I'll be here tomorrow, which will be... Next. <laughs> Guys, what have we ended up with? Well, in the second you're going to see it race up and down the road. The first one there, I guess. I've ended up the bike now. It's got little cable ties holding the front on, cable ties holding these panels on, and overspray absolutely everywhere. I've ended up the bike that sounds better, pulls better, and looks better. So, guys, it was a long video, I know. But here's me racing up and down the road. And as I said, like, subscribe, look around the outside, mate, and maybe check out the Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. He's racing up down the road. So guys, there you go, quick one up and down, does 50 miles an hour, pulls up hills, does really well. Guys, check out the screens and little bits around, please like and subscribe, and uh, keep making them. Done well with this now, runs and I'm happy with it. Anyway guys, there you go.